Hi everyone, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Now, um, today is World Mental Health Day, so um, I thought I would give you the time to tell you guys about the um, hor like the horrendous moment I was going to end my life, and thank God I didn't. I could have ended my life, but I didn't, so yeah. Now, behind me is the um, bathroom, so now the door is obviously shut because um, that's where I was going to like end my life actually so yeah and I'd rather not open the door and like show you guys because I don't want to like scare any of you people out there so anyway this happened about three years ago now lots of you may like remember the time I uploaded um, a video about three years ago explaining like why 2017 has not been a good year now obviously for those of you that don't know I haven't even like seen it um my older sister um, this was back in January of 2017. She, we found out she was pregnant. Obviously, like about seven months because we, you know, we had like no idea. Um, and back in February, she lost it. It, it was um, a stillbirth. Now that was one of the most horrendous and like the worst thing that my family and I have ever like been through and stuff like that. So, and. With me, I feel a little bit left out because I feel like I had absolutely like no one at the time. Um, my mum had her workmates, she had like lots of friends who supported her. Um, my sister, yeah, she had so many people like saying, oh my god, like I'm sorry for your loss and all that load of stuff. Um, and that's when like the family issue got really complicated. I mean, because I mean, we had about one or two of them saying that he does like you know that the baby deserves to be dead and stuff like that so yeah absolutely awful and and i mean like, all that because they were angry because they, they overheard it by a phone call and i would love to say to them would well, you know what it was either a phone call or social media so yeah make your choice about that um so yeah, that was like one of the worst things ever. And the worst of all, they did not come over and like support us or anything when like we needed them. So we had absolutely like no one, not even my grandmother. She um couldn't be bothered, stop, which is a shame and a pain really. Because I mean, yeah, my mum was really upset. And like, you know, she called her up and said, I need you, I need you. Oh, but it's too far away, she said. And I'm like, are you serious? So yeah, uh, anyway, um, so yeah, this happened... So yeah, for like the next few months of like of that happening, I mean, it was hard. It was, I stayed in my room most of the time, just trying to like shut myself away from everything. Um, and yeah, just trying to like sort things out and stuff like that. I, um, yeah, but then again, I felt a little bit left out because I had to like no one at the time. So, and I thought, well, what can I do about myself? And worst of all, I was not working at the time. Anyway, so it and as like the months rolled in, I thought to myself, well, do you know what? You're not gonna understand me then, fine then. I will make myself an appointment with the doctor and hopefully I can have a long talk. And obviously not, hopefully not have therapy or like medication. But my mom kept saying, well, if you see a doctor, that's what they're gonna do. They're just gonna give you medication and that's it. But I did not believe it, I thought, no, I want to have a long talk with my doctor because I can't talk to you. I can't talk to anybody else because they just don't understand. I tried talking to like my mates about it, but they didn't seem to understand. So I was like, and I haven't spoken to them since really. So back in August, I went to see my GP and I've known my doctor since I was born really. So yeah, ever since I was like a baby. Um, yeah, she was very good at explaining everything and Seriously, like, if you want to make an appointment with her, you have to wait for about a month. It's so, like, oh, my God. So, yeah, and I went to see her. I told her that I've been struggling with my anxiety and obviously a bit of my depression. And she said, well, the only thing we can do is give you medication. So I was really peed off about it, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Excuse my friends, but really, like, that was my reaction. And I thought seriously this is not fair like I come up here because I wanted to talk to you I wanted to come out and feel like happy again feel great but no I came out I was not happy and I have to admit I was so angry I was really angry because like, I came out and my mum was there and she just had a smile on her face like oh my god did it go well are you okay 
and I just said, well, it wasn't what I was hoping, so all that load of crap, and obviously like, we walked home, and I just, I got really upset, actually, and I just thought, like, you know, like, well, I'm, what, why, well, there's nothing I can do about it, is there? Like, no one can help me. So as soon as, like, we got home, I burst into tears, and I just ran up to my bedroom, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. It was terrible, really. Like, I just couldn't stop crying. Like, I was crying about what had happened, obviously, like, with, like, the grief. Um, I was crying, when, like, when um, one of my cats ran away and never came back. I cried how I felt like I was never wanted and stuff like that. And then I thought about the time that I was bullied in high school a lot and how, again, I wasn't really, like, wanted. I was in everybody's, like, way. I felt so rejected all the time. And then I looked, obviously, in, like, the bathroom. And then that's when I started thinking, I'm going to do it. If nobody's going to, like, talk to me, if nobody's going to understand me, then what's the point of even, like, living anymore? And then I started thinking about, you know, shall I do it? And then I started thinking, do you know what? If I do this, it's going to, like, make the rain stop, the sun is going to shine and everyone's gonna be happy again. They're like, they're no longer like, think about me anymore. Like they'll just forget about me. So I was thinking, geez, what would happen if my mom spotted this? And then I thought, well, yeah, she will be really upset. She will be terrible, but she'll probably be on antidepressants again. And then that way, you know, she'll have my sister to deal with and that way she won't have to worry about me anymore because, you know, I mean, like, she sometimes says that, you know, it's hard worrying about one person and the other. And where I'm, like, the youngest in the family, I feel like, well, why have me? And that's another thing. I mean, like, sometimes, like, when I get so angry, I say to her all the time, well, why didn't you just terminate me? Like, that would have made life so much easier. Like, you would have been better off with just one child and... And I feel bad about it sometimes because, like, my mother always says, stop talking like that. That is hurtful and that is, like, silly stuff. You do not say stuff like that. So, yeah. But, um... But, yeah, no, but I think... Because as soon as, like, she was pregnant with me, that's when things, like, took a turn for the worse. Anyway, um... So, yeah, I thought about that. I thought about my sister. But then I thought, well, yeah, she'll cry a little bit. But then she'll cry more over um, her baby. And then I thought, geez, well, like, the people who hate me, they're going to come over, they'll start laughing, and then they're going to start pointing, and they'll start smiling, they'll probably bring a glass of champagne with them, and just celebrate. And, yeah, and then I just thought, geez, what about my family and all that? I think, well, yeah, they'll be shocked, but then they'll probably just be like, don't care. So, and I just kept saying to myself, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna turn on the taps and I'm gonna fill the bathtub right to the top and I'm gonna drown myself. I'm gonna drown and I'm gonna do it. And then I will and then all of a sudden I felt ready to do it and I thought, do I want to do it? And then what stopped me? This sounded like a bit of a random voice in my head. I don't know I don't know if it was like my conscience or if it was like a schizophrenic me or something. And it said to me, are you insane? And, it, and I even like remember it saying to me, do you remember the time when you was a little girl and whenever you'd go in the bath, that was like the worst days of the year. Like, cause I mean, I hated going in like the bathtub. And do you remember like that time you had that really bad nightmare that still, scars you for life now this nightmare oh my god it freaking still scars me for life actually and i still remember it bit by bit now what actually happened was that me and my sister we was in the bath this was my dream by the way it never happened and she just my sister just went under and i'm just standing there thinking oh what's going on and i see her underwater and she is struggling to get out and my feet were frozen i didn't know what to do i couldn't scream for help so yeah, I think that's what really like brought the fear of like water inside me. So yeah, because that's really um, scarred me. So yeah, I, th I kept thinking about that voice I heard telling me like, oh my God, are you insane? Like, you're so stupid. Do you, remem do you remember when you was a little girl and you used to be so scared of drowning in there and now you want to do it? And that's when 
I got so scared. I thought, oh my God, like, what am I doing to myself? I'm gonna, like, this depression is, like, really getting to me now. Like, it's gonna, it's really affecting me now and I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do and I thought, and then all of a sudden the voice in my head again saying, was like, go downstairs, hug your mum, that's all you can think of. And it was a good thing that she was downstairs. She was so she was so unaware of like what was wrong with me. Like she didn't even know I was crying upstairs. So it took me like about 10 minutes just to like, I mean like go downstairs and just tell her that I wanna do it. But then again, I got scared thinking, oh my God, if I tell her that I wanna kill myself, she's gonna freak out. But the voice in me head just kept saying to me, that's the only thing you can do. That's the only thing that you can do. Just go downstairs, hug your mum, and it will be all right. It will be fine. So I did that. And my mother was like, what's the matter? What is it? What's wrong? And then I was like, mum, I want to kill myself. I want to kill myself. Can you help me? Help me. I'm scared. And, and yeah, she um, hugged me. And then I told her about how stupid I felt, how terrible I felt. And... She just said, it's okay, it's okay, I'm here. You know what I mean? And um, the most weirdest thing was, is that it took me about a good couple of minutes just to like, for her to calm me down and just hug me, saying that it was all right. So yeah, and I just, and all of a sudden I just felt so much better. I thought, wow, man, I feel great. Like, I feel, you know, that I don't need to do this. I really don't need to kill myself or anything. So... And then I told her that how stupid I felt and and then like you know my mum told me that you're not stupid, you're not stupid, you're just going through a blip and that's fine, it's okay, you know, to feel like that. Um and yeah, so and then it just the most weirdest thing was is that I was scared to go back upstairs, but eventually I did. And I just got on with my life. I just felt alright again and I thought, you know, do I need therapy or something? And I mean, a few months later, I was feeling great. I felt very happy in such a long time. And then I went to a doctor who was an, also a therapist. And the next morning I just woke up and it brought all the memories back about what happened and stuff like that. And that's when it went downhill. So yeah, freaking awful. But yeah, that's um my harrowing and like really horrible moment where I was gonna commit suicide, but thankfully I didn't because here I am now three years later. I work in a dance company and I really enjoy it. I feel, I mean, they are so like good with mental health. Like they understand me and I'm quite open about it. And lots of people around here do actually suffer from mental health, but we're so like open about it and we always talk about it. And that's what really makes me feel happy. And with the theater still closed at the moment, I mean, it brings back so much positive memories, like, of me wanting to dance. So, yeah, we are, I'm still hoping it will open soon, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know when just yet. But, yeah, so I hope that you guys watched this. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was quite hard for me to talk about, really. But, yeah, I'm so happy I, I spoke about it. And I'd like to wish you all a World Mental Health Day. And we will be okay. And it's okay to not be okay. And best of all, please, if you have a problem and you feel like you're alone, talk to somebody that you can trust, especially a doctor. Um, and yeah, they will give you the help that you need. So yeah, I'll see you guys real soon. Hopefully there will be another episode of the Most Rose and Forgotten Kids shows. I don't know just yet. I might give it a couple of weeks, but we'll see. Okay, so see you guys later. Bye.